ladies, the TQ has a new requirement for you, and I do hope this is a joke. Greetings and welcome back to Here's What I Heard. I'm Laura the Goddess, your hostess. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Don't forget, every Thursday, 7 p.m. Central Time, the Talk To Me America show where the world wants to know what you have to say. So call me and tell them like it is. Also, please support the channel by giving me a like, a comment, a share, a subscription, and a donation would be the ultimate. All my links are below. Click on some of them, will ya? Now, I know that I've covered some pretty strange things in the past and some pretty odd articles. And of course, I'm going to take you back to IQFY once again with uh, an article that, again, I don't know whether it's a parody. There's no byline or anything like that. But in light of the month that's coming up, it's not a surprising thing. However, it's kind of one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard. But it's another... To me, it's another way of their by any means necessary to enforce this ideology on everyone, especially women. Get a load of this from IQFY. Obviously, this is a uh, site you have to uh, subscribe to, pay money or whatever like that. But they give you enough of an idea of whether or not you want to do this or not. Um, I would venture to say that this is actually trying to attract trans women. But get a load of this headline. Encourage women to smell their poop. To be more inclusive to trans women. Now, first of all, if you're in the bathroom by yourself, there's... I'm not including anybody else in that. Okay, I, um, yeah... <laughs> Nobody wants to be included in that, do they? But I love how they come straight forward with the first sentence. Some women have a hole where their penis used to be. Let that sink in for a minute. A hole. Women. Penis. And it can share microbiome with the colon, creating a distinct transitioning odor. Well, I wonder why that is. I've actually heard that, that when you do the transition surgery, the bottom surgery as they call it, that doctors have to use part of the colon to create the gap, the hole, something. Um, muscle, something that holds the muscle or something like that. Like I say, they're creating a hole where one doesn't really belong next to a hole that belongs there that might possibly that they, they, they can join together. You do the math. I'm not a doctor, but just common sense. Let's read on. In solidarity with trans women this month, you can make a difference by putting your olfactory system to use while going number two. So the first one is like flat out. This is what happens. And the second one is, oh, number two. Yes! Or should I say, yes! There's an exclamation point behind that word. It's not a joke. We are sincerely asking all women to please spend more time smelling their poo during bathroom breaks and to critically examine what many of our gender have to endure as part of the cost of bottom surgery. First of all, why is that my problem? Just asking. And what does me having to smell my poo, which pretty much do anyway, to be honest, have anything to do with men with holes in their bodies now? Still can't figure that out. And who are they talking to here? And again, the cost of your bottom surgery. Why are we responsible for that? It is time for us all to do the work to truly empathize 
with the sights, sounds, and smells endured by every number of our large and beautiful gender community, including those with distinct transitioning odors. No thanks. I would venture to say that, given the choice, you wouldn't deal with it either. And uh, I've actually seen some of the pictures uh, that um, you guys have to deal with when you're doing this transition. You basically are peeling skin off of your body to do these things. Or you have a scar all the way across your, your, your chest. That's horrific to me. And I didn't go into medication. In fact, I can't look at these. They make me faint. That's one of the reasons I didn't go into medicine. I can't handle all of that stuff. So please, as a human being, don't make everyone deal with this. And this is what I'm talking about with this trans thing. They want you to be in every little aspect of it as where if you ask them whether they had one or the other, they would tell you it's none of your business. But they want you to see all the aspects of it and all the smells and sights and sounds too. No, thank you. Hard pass. Now they do. The, they have a link here in these distinct the, on distinct and odors, and it goes to a medical site explaining the procedure. Uh, I didn't read it all. TLDR. Um, but uh, they go into the social taboo around frank discussion of smells is already quite strong. I wonder actually if they meant that as a joke. But doubly so when it comes to the ones that can come from MTF Neo Vaginas. Okay, there's a new one. Neo Vagina. <laughs> of course, my brain immediately went to a vagina that Sikhiled. You know, Neo Nazi. Neo Vagina. That's a new one. If you are a regular on advice and trans subreddits, which why anyone would take advice from strangers on the internet, I'll never know. But then again, here we are. You know, you usually don't have to wander too far down the feeds before coming across anonymous posts carefully prodding for advice on neovaginal smells like this one. And they give you an example. One night, I was going down on her, so she washed her bits before she came in the bedroom, and, and she laid on the bed. Uh, do I want to know any more? Well, yeah. I was about a few inches from her face, from her face, when I noticed a foul smell that I can best describe as still urine, cheesy, and a bit like feces. I've heard of post-op MTF smells, but I've read most people saying that they go away quickly after transition. Anyway, I backed away because I was so put off by that smell. <laughs> she kept asking, what's wrong? And I finally broke down and told her what's wrong. Dear penthouse forum, perhaps? This sounds like something that never happened, but then again. She was confused and kept smelling herself. Uh, I'm glad I wasn't a fly on the wall for that one. Saying she didn't smell anything, she said she just washed it, too. It's been a fight between me and her, and she's self-conscious about it. Why would you fight about it? I asked if it could be an infection or her hygiene habits, lifestyle, or diet, because I know those things can affect the smell of the vagina. But she has a neo-vagina. She told me that that's just the way her vagina and all vaginas smell. Good God, I hope not. She told me it didn't smell like what I described it as, and it just smelled like vagina. Yeah, vaginas can get pretty ripe. Uh, <laughs> I tried asking my mother about what it could be and she couldn't give me any answers because she's not informed on this topic. I tried asking my gay cousin but she didn't have any answers either. 
I was wondering if anyone in here could give me some advice on this. Do transgender women just have a different smell down there than cis women? Is that just her natural smell? If so, what can I do to get used to the smell? Well, I get the feeling that the answer to that second question was yes, that is her natural smell. But no, vaginas don't usually smell like feces. But before we get into the cultural impact and science of unique genital scents, which there actually is a science behind it, and I would venture to say, in, in my opinion, I would venture to say that this is their bodies rejecting the stuff that don't belong there. Not to mention the fact I would venture to say that in, in a man's case, that once you do the uh, the orchiotomy and all that other stuff, the, the body is looking for that. You know what I'm saying? Your body knows. Your body is an amazing, amazing, amazing thing. And it's built in such a way, uh, if, you'll, if you actually don't pay attention to a lot of these doctors and you actually pay attention to your body and nature and all that other, and actual science, you'll know that your body pretty much tries to protect itself. The brain has a, a self-protection module in it and all that other. I mean, I'm not a doctor. I have read some of these things. I'm not... Um, well well read on it but I actually do try to pay attention to my body and I was a personal trainer uh, in my younger years for a while just to, so that I could have a free membership to the gym when I was trying to get in shape for a marathon <laughs> but yeah your body actually does protect itself in fact if you break a bone or you cut yourself or something like that your body goes into almost immediate action you know, they say hold it together, let the blood come to it and all that and, and everything. And it does. Your body will actually go into immediate action when you have these problems. That's the reason why a lot of these people actually have these problems for a lifetime. You are literally chopping off an appendage. You are It's like chopping your arm off. Your body would look for it for the rest of its life. Why do you think they call it the phantom pains and everything like that? I feel terrible for these people that are talked into these unreversible surgeries. But I can't have them make all of these little things that they do, that they have, have agreed to do on their own. Unfortunately, they have to pay the consequences for it, but they're actually trying to make everyone else pay the consequences for the things that they've chosen to do to themselves. And... As comical as this may seem, it's just one more step. <laughs> and, and like I say, I think this is a joke. I hope this is a joke. Because uh, if anybody ever comes up to me and says anything like this, uh, hard pass. Hard pass. All right. First of all, it's something that you already do unconsciously. But to actually consciously sit there and do it, I, to be honest with you, I'm not, I would be surprised if it didn't cause some kind of dysentery or some kind of problem. It's the reason why it's called waste. So there you have it. Another demand from the TQ portion of LGBTQ. In order for inclusivity, you must smell dookie. I do hope you enjoyed my video today. Don't forget, every Thursday night, 7 p.m. Central Time, the Talk To Me America show where the world wants to know what you have to say. So call me and tell them like it is. Also, please and thank you. Don't forget to support the channel by giving us a like, a subscribe, a comment, and a share. A donation would be the ultimate, and all my links are below. Click on some of them, will ya? Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. I wish you... Love, peace, health, and music, always. And until next time, AMF.